Okay. Hi, Anthony. How are you? I'm very well, Doug. How are you? Doing great. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. It's nice to have you here. And I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me. I'm very much looking forward to speaking with you and your guests or your audience. Well, you've got a book out now called Against All Odds. Is this anything like the movie? Well, I don't think so. I think it's a lot different, in fact. I mean, uh, the same thesis, but very much a, a different story. Um, my story is very much a story of resilience, of, uh, of, of going through a near-death experience and then coming back and against all odds and making it onto the football field and living a, uh, a, a really productive and great life. Okay, well, I haven't seen that movie in many years, but it, there was a football theme about it, wasn't there? You know, it's been years for me too. Uh, it's a it, that's that's an interesting commentary whether there or not there was a uh, football backdrop. But I know that that my story is a lot different because I was involved in a terrible uh, fire. I was burned over eighty seven percent of my body, third degree burns. I lost my left hand, as you can see here. I had. Uh, 134 blood transfusions, 43 surgeries. I got my last rites three times. Uh, I was never supposed to survive, let alone uh, and make it out of the hospital. I was given a 0% chance to survive. And uh, and by the grace of God, I uh, my life was saved. After uh, 21 days in the hospital, my heart rate was 189 beats per minute. My blood pressure was 49 over 20. Uh, my temperature was 106. And, and the doctor said that uh, they had to stop medication. And they said that there was nothing more that they can do. Uh, I was prayed over. I was blessed uh, and anointed. And, and, you know, against all odds, uh, the next morning, uh, when there was a vigil outside my room through the night, everyone thought I was going to pass. The next morning, my my fever was gone, my blood pressure stabilized, my heart rate stabilized. And, uh, and just a couple months later, I was released from the hospital and, uh, and, and I fought back through tremendous physical rehabilitation and, and made it back to the football field as a star outside linebacker for the Newcastle Red Hurricanes. And, uh, and my book tells that journey in, in, in quite a way that I'm finding I'm getting hundreds of calls and, and messages and and uh, and reviews and you know I'm I'm real humbled by the way that it, that my book is being received, but it's uh it's a, it it tells the story in a cinematic way uh, that shows both my ups and my downs, my my successes and my failures uh, that identifies with pe that people can identify with and and it's uh, I think it's a pretty special book. Well, it sounds like an amazing story, and I do want to go back. A little bit. It says that uh, you were 12 when you got into this fire. Can you just tell us I a was. little bit about what happened? Yeah, sure. I was a, I was a 12 year old boy. It was Halloween Day, 1987, and on Halloween Day, 1987, it was a Saturday. I had a Pop Warner football game that was scheduled to be under the lights at Taggart Stadium. Now, for those who don't know, Taggart Stadium is one of the most hallowed. Uh, high school football stadiums in the nation. It was a stadium that was built in the early 1920s and the first to have lights on it. So uh, the Newcastle Red Hurricanes in my lifetime and as a, as a child were almost bigger than an NFL team. So the, having the chance to play on that field was was so exciting under the lights to follow in the footsteps of so many great players. Um, that day, Halloween, I got caught up in uh, in doing the wrong thing. You know, one thing led to another. Me and my friend were uh, walking through the woods from my buddy's house to to my mother's, and there was a bunch of kids who were uh, sniffing gasoline out of a, uh, a four wheel bike. And uh, it's something that I had always said that I would never do, and I, it was something that I regret doing to this day. But however, um, the guys asked us. They said, "Hey, you you'll have fun," and and I succumbed to uh, peer pressure. But just like a lot of people, I made a mistake. And uh, and then I paid for it. Uh, you know, we we went back to my garage. My buddy flipped the match, and my 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 clothes caught on fire. And the next thing I knew, I was a ball of flames. Um, by the grace of God, I mean it was it, being on fire was was crazy. It was I was totally engulfed from my ankles to uh, to almost even my hair. My my clothes were on fire. It was uh, the fire was ravaging. Uh, luckily, my neighbors came out the back door. Uh, they heard me screaming and. And they covered me with an army blanket, where uh, 
where I would uh, event where which put out the flames, and I was taken by life flight hosp or helicopter to West Penn Hospital, where uh, the the great healthcare professionals and doctors they they really did a, an amazing job and used some experimental treatment and saved my life. And you know, I'm here to tell people that the beauty of my story is yes, I, I made a mistake, just like many of the listeners out there. We make mistakes. We're human beings. We we don't always follow the the right path, but there's some beauty in the fact that even though I made a mistake, there was a miracle that took place in my life. Uh, that fire was put out. My life was saved and prayers were answered. And I've had such a beautiful life ever since. Now I'm, I've been married for 24 years. Um, I have two beautiful children. Uh, I'm a certified public accountant. I, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a sports agent and certified uh, NFL contract advisor. And so I'm here to tell you a story that yeah, our suffering was was substantial, and I did make mistakes. But there's always a brighter day ahead, and there's redemption for people uh, if you, if you just see through it and do the right thing to to get better. How much time did you spend in the hospital recovering from this? Well, my initial stay in the hospital was uh, two and a half months, which is miraculous in itself. Um, then I went to rehabilitation, uh, where I was in a rehabilitation hospital for several weeks. But uh, following that, there was really uh, three or three years of inpatient or outpatient surgery and and daily physical therapy. Um, my mother and my father and my extended family members would help and, and change my dressings every single day. I was even talking to a dear friend of mine uh, the other night and he was telling me how he remembered helping me uh, with my, change my dressings uh, when I was just 12 years old and, and he was 12 as well. So you know, we had a tremendous amount of support from, from the people uh, in, in my hometown, Newcastle, Pennsylvania. And, um, and I'm here to, to provide a testimony for the fact that you know, there, there were so many blessings in my life and I'm just so thankful uh, for everybody's support along the way. And it's really wonderful to tell the story now and and uh, hear so many people who are inspired by it. Uh, people, I've been called by people from all walks of life, from, from uh, being major, uh, you know, people in, in sales for huge companies that said that read this book and they could not, they felt that they're so inspired by my story, which is humbling. And, and people who went uh, through bouts of, uh, of, of drug addiction that, that read my story and are now on their feet and, and, and living healthy and productive lives. And, and they see that, you know, they, that they were my story in a way, uh, affected them and it and reminded them of their own journey. So it's uh, it's just a really beautiful thing to be able to share uh, the suffering that I went through, but then at the same time, feel all this love coming back. It's just, it's just phenomenal. Well, so this all happened, you know, decades ago. Uh, why did you decide now to write the book? Was there something that happened recently that sort of sparked your, uh, your interest to write this all down? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, I was approached to write a book several times in my life, and I just wasn't emotionally ready for it. You know, you deal with the physical trauma, and then later on in life, you and you're just kind of like going through the process. And then, you know, but it took about 30 years, to be honest with you, for the the emotional trauma to find that healing. It was so hard. And uh, but I'll never forget. Uh, you know, when we really. Uh, when I really decided to write the book, it was uh, the day that that COVID hit in uh, 2020. I was sitting there and we were watching the TV, just like everyone else in the world, a, a little bit afraid uh, for what tomorrow might bring. And it just reminded me that, you know, the world is sick right now. The world is afraid right now. And it brought me back to when I was in the hospital and everybody was afraid of me dying. And I knew from that experience that the best days of my life all took place after the worst tragedy that I ever went through. And I wanted to write this story to give people hope at the time that, that there were gonna be brighter days ahead despite the fact that we were in a pandemic. Now, what I didn't realize is the book would take me nearly two years to write. 
I would sit and cry every single day as I relived these memories. And I went through a process to be completely authentic and, and tell the truth from uh, of my experience so people understood just how hard it was, uh, not only for me, but my family members who suffered alongside of me. And, um, and so, yes, it was the pandemic that inspired me to write the book. So some good came out of that bad situation as well. Did you write it on your own or did you have help? To write this, to oh, put it together. No, I I did. I I, I hired a, a gentleman uh, that worked with me. Uh, this was the first book that I ever I have ever written. Yeah, you know, so I I wrote every word in the book, but I had help putting together an outline, and then um, and then I would dictate uh, chapter by chapter, and and the 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 folks that I worked with would edit that. Uh, then I would rewrite uh, the the chapters as as they as we looked at it, and we went through this this process of documenting and and uh, and looking at all the the newspaper articles and and the uh, and we interviewed some of uh, the nurses that that were there and my parents and some friends and 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 I went through the process of writing it in that fashion. Uh, they would then edit the uh, material. And it came back to me, but throughout the entire process, this writing process, I wrote, uh, I must've wrote this book five different times, but I'm very thankful for all the people that helped me to make it, uh, to do it the right way. And, and one thing we did was we did it the right way with the, with the right team. So aside from the book, what else do you do now with your life? Well, I'm a certified public accountant. My wife and I have a, a beautiful small business where uh, we help uh, you know people with their tax work, with their uh, form their corporations and and uh, put together their and, and do their finance and accounting. Uh, we also uh, I've been certified as a, a sports agent. Uh, we're really launching that sports agency business uh, this this year here. Uh, and this is an exciting time because I, I passed the examination and I'm a certified contract advisor with the National Football League, um, walking in some of my family members' footsteps. And I'm speaking and I'm and, uh, doing some public speaking and, and I'm really connecting with people every single day. The beauty that has really come out of this book and this opportunity was rekindling relationships and talking with uh, other people who are burn survivors or survived uh, tragic accidents or and uh, people who've been uh, disabled in terms of uh, a car accident or losing their ability to walk, both paraplegics and quadriplegics, and other people who are in business and in sales, just having these conversations and connecting with so many people and an exchange of ideas and, and being able to share the process that I went through from uh, being in the hospital and getting on my feet and, and then getting back on the ball field and taking that and, and creating a memoir out of it that actually teaches people the lessons that I learned, but correlates them to business. Because I found that if you follow the strategies that got me back on the football field, they're the same exact strategies in a different form that will help you start a business and operate a business and, and grow to uh, and, and grow to be very successful. So it's uh, it's it's quite so I'm quite busy these days, as uh, as you may be able to tell here. Well, Anthony, we do have to wind this down. Uh, it is quite a story, and I urge everyone to go out and pick up the book. The book is called Against All Odds. The author is Anthony Rosano. Uh, the book is out now. It's been released. It has, and we made the uh, Amazon bestseller list for new releases. Uh, we made uh, the Barnes and Noble bestseller list for for new releases. It's been a very humbling experience how well this has been received so far, and the beauty of it is it's just the beginning. So very thankful that you had me here. I appreciate it very much, Doug. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, do you have a website that you want to give out? Absolutely. My website is www.anthonyrosano.com. That's A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-R-A-Z-Z-A-N-O.com. Okay. And on the website, there's information about the book and how people can buy it. Yeah, absolutely. You could buy it. You could buy it on my website and we'll send you an order out or you, else you could go uh, to Amazon.com or Barnes and Nobles or Target. That's the book. If you do a search for Anthony Rosano Against All Odds, you'll find it right away and, uh, and uh, you can get it as soon as tomorrow. 
Okay, great. Well, Anthony, again, thank you for coming on the show. It was nice meeting you and hearing your tremendous story. Best of luck with the book. I hope it does well. Thank you so much, Doug. God bless.